And welcome back, Pokemon trainers. I am a humbled Joe Brown, <laughs> joined by Jake Butler here. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, he's falling just like my life of, is I falling know. apart. Right just now. indicative of the last uh, match that we saw in stream just, there. Well, how about my boy? Are you okay, Joe? Did Lapras impress at least? Oh no, Lapras is great. If you noticed, he the was nice shiny. shiny. Yeah. Okay, we that talked I, about I it. I had to on a sixth egg. <laughs> I wasn't even shiny chaining or yeah. anything like that. So I just I just need to know if you're okay. Like I'm, I'm fine. Okay, uh, cool. Fine. <laughs> yeah. I have to live with Andrew <laughs> hovering over me for the rest of my life. I don't know how I'll sleep, but I'm just saying, A-Drive's not the only shiny hunter in the uh, Okay, all okay. right. You uh, think you're special so now, So we have you? our round five match. They're getting set up now, uh, and that is Caleb Ryer and Jeremy Odina. Yeah. Uh, we had both of these players on stream, actually, mm -hmm. yesterday. Jeremy ended up making it into top eight. I think Caleb either bubbled or, like, He was five, two. I yeah, believe. right? Yeah. So he went five and two, but I don't think he got top eight yesterday. No, he didn't. Uh, so these are two northeast players that yep. Brendan would be and Brendan and Maeve would be more <laughs> familiar with but obviously we see them at our local events here in New York and New Jersey so often that you know we kind of like, we can claim them grandfather them Nor in. northeast yeah. still, right <laughs> right yeah. um, so we saw Jeremy with his Tyranitar yesterday and like I feel like it, at least every time I've seen him in a in a, a stream so far in 2020, he's had Tyranitar on his team. I don't blame him. He has extra Joe this time around, but back <laughs> yeah. in New York, he only had the T-Tar. And uh, I think he's sticking – a lot of people had that day one T-Tar weakness policy strategy, and they've moved on. But right. I think he's, like, sticking with it. Yeah, I mean, it's a good Pokemon. I really – like, it's hard to use Tyranitar poorly. <laughs> like, it, like it's it's so good and so flexible that you can run a bunch of different sets with it, uh, and it's I mean it supports Excadrill very well. Obviously, you want the Sand Rush with it. Uh, both I believe these players actually using teams that are pretty familiar to them. I think very similar to their teams they used yesterday. Maybe some minor tweaks. Maybe they played through yesterday's tournament and thought, you know, I want to improve this matchup a little bit, uh, make a small change. But otherwise, I believe it's the same six Pokemon for the both of them. That's what I always yeah. wonder is like, because I've never done a double, you know, a double header or anything like right. how our players are like. <coughs> it's similar to playing in a regional, regional, and then the next day playing at the MSS. Like, yeah. what adjustments mm -hmm. do you make in between? Like, Jeremy obviously got top eight with his performance yep. yesterday. So, does he tweak any moves? Does he tweak any any spreads, or does he change a Pokemon? Like, mm -hmm. it's. I think that's always so interesting when you talk to players. It's like, how confident did you perform in day one? Was like, were were you the problem? Were your Pokemon <laughs> the problem? Or right. like, what needs to change to perform well in day two? Yeah, no. I mean, it, it comes down to a case by case thing. I think you know if you're playing through a tournament and you think, oh, I never brought this Pokemon at all, all day. Like, maybe that's a, a slot that you could change up. Maybe you change a set of that Pokemon. Maybe just change a couple moves. Maybe you'd replace it entirely. Or if you play through the day and you think, you know, I went 5-2, but you know, I really liked the team. It played well, and I know that I made some mistakes on this day that I can correct tomorrow. You know, maybe you just stick with the same team and try to be a little bit sharper uh, the next day. So it looks like that's what Caleb's down here. He's sticking with that same team. I know I, I was talking to him last night a little bit, and he likes this team a lot, and I think it's cool, too. Um, so <coughs> I think he's just kind of betting that he can, you know, pilot a little bit stronger today. Yeah, stronger than I did, that's for sure. Yeah. He, has, he has Lapras at <laughs> least. Yeah, the dueling so Lapras. That, we'll that brings my, uh, my spirits back. <laughs> All right. Let's we'll so. see if Lapras Again, can... Uh, hatch on the sixth egg. All right, guys. <laughs> uh, so let's get into this match between Jeremy Odina and Caleb Ryer. Uh, they're going to be locking into the game. Yesterday, we actually saw Rotom Wash uh, with Nasty Plot. Yep. There was a dueling Nasty Plot right. Rotom Wash mirror yeah. here. <laughs> so I would assume if this is the same Rotom Wash, like he'd have that option I would imagine. To, to hit some things with super strong Hydro Pumps. It actually looks like a pretty strong option against Caleb's team, too, because Caleb has, you know, the Lapras, which wouldn't appreciate a plus two Thunderbolt. Uh, he's got the Rotom, which wouldn't appreciate even a plus zero Hydro Pump, but plus two even more. Uh, Togekiss doesn't really want to be facing Electric type. Uh, we know Durant has pretty pitiful special defense. Uh, the Gothitelle and the Scrafty are a little bit bulkier, so they could, you know, put up a little bit of a fight against the Rotom. But if, if Caleb isn't careful about, you know, making sure that Rotom isn't in a place to start getting those free nasty plots and firing off some strong moves, uh, that might be a pretty big issue for him. So let's get into it quickly. The Jeremy's team has Tyranitar, Togekiss, Rotom Wash, Dragapult, Excadrill, and Arcanine, as Caleb has the Lapras, Rotom Heat, Gothitelle, Scrafty, Togekiss, and Durant. The Lapras on Caleb's team we saw yesterday is carrying that weakness policy item, which is pretty cool. You know, as we saw in uh, your game, Joe, Lapras isn't known to be the strongest of Pokemon, uh, but giving it that weakness <laughs> policy... <laughs> but it takes hits! <coughs> it, oh, it takes hits, it, fine. It just has an issue, you know, <laughs> dishing them back out. You know, but with that weakness policy, especially if, a way to, if you have a way to activate it yourself, uh, I believe we saw Caleb on stream Volt Switch himself yesterday to activate that policy. Uh, it, it, it turns Lapras into both, you know, a defensive and an offensive powerhouse. So uh, that's a pretty strong option for Caleb here too. And that's something that is really only made possible due to Dynamax, because right. you can yeah. have these bulky Pokemon like Rhyperior and Lapras and Tyranitar and and others uh, activate those 
uh, weakness policies and still have still take advantage of their bulk by getting the increase to their offenses. Mm -hmm. So game one of round five, Jeremy Odina on the bottom of your screen with Rotom Wash and Dragapult and Caleb Ryer on the top of your screen with Durant and Togekiss. Durant, like we keep talking about it being one of the fastest Pokemon in the format. Unfortunately, one of the Pokemon in this format that is faster is the Dragapult that you're seeing on Jeremy's team. Uh, and Dragapult do have access to fire type attacks like Flamethrower or Fire Blast. Uh, so if Jeremy is running one of those moves, Caleb has to be very careful about, you know, not just losing his Durant immediately. Thankfully, that Durant is next to that Togekiss, which has access to Follow Me. You know, could possibly protect that Durant, allow it to fire off a, a really powerful max move, uh, and possibly take a knockout on either of these Pokemon. Dragapult will switch out, though, for Jeremy, maybe expecting an incoming follow me that would redirect the potential fire attack from the Durant and putting it towards the Togekiss. Arcanine will switch in, though, intimidating both of Caleb's Pokemon, obviously only mattering on this Durant. And since Durant is going for the Dynamax here, um, that's interesting. Caleb's trainer looks pretty much exactly like him. That's, yeah. a, that's a good job Very well done. <laughs> on, his, on his avatar. Maybe he's not wearing a Poliwhirl t-shirt. That's the only <laughs> difference. But this Durant is going to stay at minus one attack for uh, the next three turns if he does not switch it out. Of course, that is countered by having Life Orb and Hustle boost on the Durant. It's like that Intimidate doesn't matter as much. A follow me from the Togekiss will redirect good any play. attacks. And Max Flutter by from Durant into oh, Rotom. Brings him down. Not enough for a one-hit knockout, but that would be very impressive if an intimidated Max Flutterby right. would have knocked out Rotom from full from full I mean, even, even that is so much damage on its own. Like you did, you're, That is minus one. You almost knocked out Rotom, which is known to be on the bulkier end as far as Pokemon go. And the Citrus Berry will have the Rotom uh, Watch recover 25% of his HP. Togekiss will tank that Thunderbolt with ease, still staying up above half of his HP. I like that turn from Caleb a lot. You know, that's a really strong Max Flutterby. You know, he both gets some big damage on the Rotom and also reduces its special attack, uh, which means that Togekiss really didn't take that much from what we can assume. You know, as a Rotom, it might have some offensive investment thanks to that nasty plot. Uh, now that Durant's in a pretty strong spot here because the Rotom isn't threatening much damage. We know that Durant can knock out Arcanine with a minus one Max Quake, which is just ridiculous. Uh, so now Caleb has an option to fire off a Max Quake, possibly boost that special defense, uh, and then have this Togekiss try to deal with the Rotom. Arcanine is going to go for the Protect here, though. Doesn't want to take that potential Max Quake. Let's see if that's what Caleb opted for on turn two. Follow me from the Togekiss is going to redirect any attacks yet again. But the Durant will actually go for the Max Rock Ball. Still a super effective hit uh, on the Arcanine. So either way, it's only doing minimal damage because of the Protect. It's only doing 25% of the damage that it would have. However, it does set up the sand, so there will be a bit of residual uh, tick damage at the end of the turn for the other three Pokemon that are not Durant. This Togekiss is able to hang on again from a second Thunderbolt. That's how proving how critical that Max Flutterby was on turn one by lowering that special attack. Togekiss can hang around yet again to follow me uh, and attack away. So this Durant looks like it's going to make it through potentially its three Dynamax turns scot free. Yeah, I know. The only thing the Durant's taken is a couple Life Orb damage ticks and, you know, the Intimidate from the Arcanine. Uh, the Rockfall, an interesting choice there. You would, you might think, you know, a Quake might make more sense to boost that special defense, uh, make sure that Togekiss takes a little bit less damage from the Rotom. Uh, but Caleb possibly trying to cover a Togekiss switch on Jeremy's end. Uh, that is the only thing that could switch into a Ground-type attack uh, that isn't already on the field. So a smart play from Caleb there. He gets that damage uh, through the Protect and sets up the Sandstorm for a little more chip damage as well. Lapras will switch in, though. Uh, so that Togekiss is going to switch out with that little bit of HP it has remaining. And now it's time for Jeremy to go for a Dynamax, and he is deciding his Dynamax Pokemon of choice in Game 1 is the Arcanine. Still above half of his HP, though, so uh, with it being doubled, it helps out a little bit, but uh, is not a potentially dangerous spot from this Max Quake, uh, which is what Durant does decide to go for. It is a super effective hit. It's intimidated, oh. and with Dynamax, the Arcanine is able to to hang on there just barely. So Durant will increase his special defense by one stage, though, which helps. Also importantly for the Lapras, that will increase its special defense. Arcanine going to eat a berry of its own. That one is a Figgy Berry, recovering more of its HP. And the Max Flare into Lapras is a neutral hit, though. Uh, so that does around half of Lapras's HP. But thanks to the Max Quake, that actually did less uh, because he switched in to get the benefit of it. Thunderbolt, though, from the that that Rotom, honestly, not even worth mentioning, and that's how yeah. little damage it did. 
Yeah, no, thanks to the, the Flutterbind and the Quake, Durant actually takes a lot less damage from that Thunderbolt than you might have expected. Uh, smart play from Jeremy there, he you know, preserves the Arcanine this turn, you know, if he didn't Dynamax it, it certainly would have been knocked out by that Max Quake, and he's able to fire off that Max Flare into Lapras. Uh, so Caleb possibly trying to predict a Thunderbolt into that Togekiss slot, which would have been, you know, a great play had that worked out, because the, the Rotom is still at minus one special attack, the Lapras would have been at plus one special defense uh, from that Quake, and the Lapras could have gotten his weakness policy off really easily. But Jeremy reading through that, going for the Max Flare into that slot instead for some good damage in that Lapras, and uh, a little bit of chip on the, uh, the Durant from the Rotom. Lapras is actually going to switch out, it's going to forgo that special defense boost it got last turn. Uh, to let Scrafty join the field, intimidating both Arcanine and the Togekiss that also switched in on Jeremy's turn. Uh, the Rock Slide actually avoiding on the Togekiss oh. would have hit it super effectively. Not enough for a knockout on the Arcanine, though. He just barely hangs on, and now he is free uh, to Max Flare, but he goes into the Scrafty slot, bringing him down to about half his HP, and that's how, um, you know, both of, both of Caleb's Pokemon are down to, to half HP here. That's an unfortunate miss on the Togekiss there. It would have been some decent damage, but that's kind of the game you play when you're using Durant uh, with Rock Slide. You know, the Hustle already drops, uh, Hustle drops the accuracy of Rock Slide, which isn't known to be the most accurate move. Uh, so <laughs> you're kind of playing with fire there. Uh, unfortunately, got burned that time around, but if he's able to connect a Rock Slide on the Arcanine this time around, uh, we'll be able to knock it out. And this fake out a really nice uh, pivot from Caleb because it does protect both of his Pokemon from the Togekiss this turn. The Rock Slide will knock out Arcanine here, and of course it's super effective on the Togekiss as well, so that does a lot of damage to it, thanks to the, uh, and also thanks to the fake out from Scrafty, the Togekiss is not even able to go for an attack of any kind this turn. So now, uh, we finally knocked, there's been a Pokemon knocked out, there's a lot of right. low health Pokemon <laughs> yeah. on both of these trainer sides, but there was finally a KO. Yeah, I mean, Caleb does take the first KO and he gets the Togekiss down to about half. Uh, unfortunately, Dragapult does come in here, and the Dragapult it can't be redirected by Togekiss this turn, and clearly the Togekiss is not on the field for Caleb. Uh, and Scrafty is at low enough health that something like a Draco Meteor from this Dragapult might be able to finish it off. Uh, clearly, if, if the Dragapult is running a Fire-type move, even a Shadow Ball at this point will be more than enough to take out the Durant. So actually, Jeremy has found his way into a pretty good spot here. Even though he did lose his Arcanine, uh, this Togekiss fears absolutely nothing from the Scrafty, and the Dragapult will outspeed both of Caleb's Pokemon and threaten a KO on both as well. Then the only question left is, does the Draco Meteor connect if he did want to go for that on right. Scrafty? We'll find out. Another turn, though, because Scrafty went for Protect, and Jeremy is not falling for it. Instead, Flamethrower into Durant. That will take it down. There aren't enough Max Quake special defense boosts <laughs> in the world to right. help Durant take that Flamethrower, especially with the Life Orb boost from the Dragapult. Dazzling Gleam will go into Scrafty's Protect here. Uh, so now Dragapult can target down this Scrafty the next turn. Yeah, true. The, the Togekiss showing Dazzling Gleam means that the, the Scrafty has to be wary of that as well. Now the Lapras coming in, you know, at a little over half health. It's not really a great position anymore because it does have you know, pretty good special defense, but a combination of Draco Meteor from this Dragapult uh, and something like a Dazzling Gleam from the Togekiss may be able to finish it off, you know, especially if this Togekiss is one of those variants that likes to critical hit its moves. Uh, thanks to the assistance of uh, a little fun ability we call Super Luck uh, and a little Scope Lens item as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's something... Uh Togekiss, it's just it's just so viable in many different a aspects of the right. format. You can try to be a, a crit machine. You can be supportive. You can you know wreck havoc with weakness policy. There's just so much that Togekiss can do, all with that bright smile on its face. The whole time. <laughs> Lapras will protect as well as the uh, the Dragapult also decided to pr protect there. The dazzling gleam though from Togekiss is four times super effective onto Scrafty. Well, critical hit not mattering <laughs> there at all as Scrafty will go down. Pretty much that game, all it did was fake out and protect, so not as much uh, use out of the Scrafty as I'm sure Caleb would have liked. Now Caleb is down to his final two Pokemon here in the Lapras and the Togekiss. That Togekiss is very low health. We haven't seen it in a couple of turns, but you remember it switched out just barely after surviving or enduring a hit. Yeah, that Scrafty really didn't stand a chance that turn. The, the Dazzling Gleam, easily able to finish it off. And here, Caleb in an even worse spot here. Now he has to kind of rely on this Follow Me to take an attack away from the Lapras. But we know that Dazzling Gleam from Jeremy's Togekiss uh, is a spread move. So that Dazzling Gleam, you know, would have hit the Lapras still, and as well the Togekiss, even if it hadn't been knocked out by the Shadow Ball from the Dragapult. Yeah, Togekiss being, uh, taking the KO there from Shadow Ball. Obviously, Dragapult was expecting a Follow Me to come out. Uh, so this single target Dazzling Gleam, though, into the Lapras, and a freeze dry though from Lapras into Dragon Ball is enough for a one hit KO there, except for the life orb. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Close you, know, you know what I mean. That, the right. first time Dragon Ball has been hit, 
Yeah. So, um, yeah. Obviously, freeze dry is such a great move to put on Lapras. One, one, it has the same type of attack bonus since Lapras is an ice type, and two, it's a great way to hit water types like Gastrodon or, say, Rotom Wash, right. <laughs> potentially. <laughs> Unfortunately, it might be a little too late here. The Rotom and the uh, Togekiss both shown to be faster than Lapras, and Rotom looks like it'll be able to finish off this Lapras with a Thunderbolt, and that means Jeremy Odena takes game one here against Caleb Breyer. Jeremy looking like he's going to uh, keep the pace that keep up pace as to what he had yesterday by right. being um, the I think Jeremy was actually the number one seed he in was. Swiss yep. yesterday, mm -hmm. right? So obviously <coughs> he's four and right now, looking to go five and He's looking to keep that momentum. Uh, of course his his downfall was uh, was uh, James Evans in top cut. Though. Right. So um, but Caleb are there are there adjustments that he can try to go for here? Like he had Gothitelle in team preview. Obviously right. he didn't. Uh, he decided not to bring that maybe because of the uh, the Dragapult. But mm -hmm. are there some adjustments, or does he just have to go, you know, all out with the Durant mode? I, I, he could make adjustments. He certainly could. I, he. I mean, it seemed like in the beginning of the match, he had a pretty strong position. You know, that Durant was firing off some pretty strong moves. He was doing a lot of damage. And then once he lost the Durant, he lost a lot of offensive momentum. Uh, and so if he's able to kind of capitalize a little bit more on the Durant uh, and its max moves, if he brings it again, uh, that might be one way for him to kind of turn this match around. You know, I think the Pokemon that Jeremy brought are, is probably his best bet against Caleb's team. I really like the Dragapult. Uh, we do know now that it has Flamethrower, so it, it, as soon as it gets a chance to Flamethrower the Durant, uh, the Durant will just get roasted. Uh, and so it, it, it's a strong bring. You know, it's really good against the Gothitelle that you mentioned. Uh, it can it can put, pump some good damage into everything with something like a Life Orb Draco Meteor. So I like the Dragapult. Uh, the Rotom looks like it's a pretty strong call as well. So I, I, li I like the teams that both of these players brought. You know, but obviously they're the ones playing, and so they got to make those decisions themselves. They both have killer trainer cards as well. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I would like to potentially see a Scrafty lead instead of having it in the back so you mm -hmm. have immediate fake-out pressure instead of uh, having to switch in later on. Like, you're reacting to his Arcanine uh, potentially. But Caleb does not go for that. Instead, he will adjust, though, bringing Gothitelle. Yeah. So Gothitelle Lapras is the lead for Caleb, and then Dragapult Togekiss is the lead for Jeremy. And Lapras Gothitelle together just screams Paris Song. Parish Song or something like a Trick Room, you know, we do know that Lapras has that weakness policy. Uh, we've seen things like Brick Break Gothitelle do uh, somewhat well with next to a Rhyperior with the weakness policy as well. So that's an option here. Uh, you mentioned Fake Out Pressure, which Gothitelle also has that's this right. generation. So that's an option for Caleb. There's a few different things he can do here. Uh, unfortunately for Jeremy, he does have the option to switch this Dragapult out because it is a ghost type. But I don't believe we're seeing that this turn. No, there's actually no switches from either of our trainers here on this turn. Instead, Dragapult committing will actually go for the Dynamax here. So uh, Life Orb boosted Dynamax the attacks are no joke. No joke with the Dragapult. Uh, going to double his HP as well as obviously it's what you do when you <laughs> Dynamax. And we're going to have matching Dynamaxes here. So obviously I would assume this would be the Lapras, right? I would right? hope so. Not, yeah. not, I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he wants to go for some uh, really low base power. Max uh, Mindstorm. Uh, max strikes with the fake out. <laughs> <laughs> just for the yeah. speed drop. <laughs> right. uh, obviously uh, yeah. my favorite here, the Lapras. You know, we, just, we saw it in that previous match. Uh, I think it did pretty well. I guess yeah. other, <laughs> other, people, other people disagree. He did his best. <laughs> my, my shiny Lapras did his best. So. Uh, the Dragapult actually goes for Max Phantasm Ooh. into Gothitelle. Gothitelle revealing the Kasib Berry. I'm not sure this will be enough. Which is the Ghost Resist Berry. Can it handle Life Orb, though? Not, no, no, it's it not. certainly can't. It's not enough. Wow. Back in my day, Gothitelle was a special defense <laughs> tank. Now he can't. He yeah, can't the helping it. hand from that Togekiss coming in handy there. That possibly right. could have been something that uh, Gothitelle would have survived without help, without that helping hand boost. It is a very bulky Pokemon by nature, like you said. It's known for its pretty high special defense. And the uh, Max Hailstorm is yeah. not a. So let's just get it straight for the record. Freeze Dry knocks out, but. Max Hailstorm does not. Right. Just, that's how, how Dynamax works out sometimes. <laughs> Obviously, he took some Life Orb recoil in the previous game right. that made it possible. I do know I, I do know that calculation pretty well. That <laughs> I from, bet you do. <laughs> that freeze dry does about 80% to a Dragapult. Uh -huh. It's very unfortunate. But we one-shot Dracovish. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> no, uh, just, uh, Scrappy really will come in here yeah. into that vacant slot and will intimidate. A really strong play from Jeremy. That helping hand Max Phantasm had... You know, I, like the Scrafty could have switched in, but at that point, the Gothitelle was the main target uh, for Jeremy there because it was Caleb's Trick Room option. You know, it was kind of the crux of the Parish Song option as well. And we saw Caleb yesterday, uh, Parish Song with only two opponents, or with his opponent having only two Pokemon left, but that's something you got to go for way down the road. And especially if Caleb is going to go straight for a Dynamax here, uh, there's got to be another way for uh, the Lapras and Gothitelle to work out. 
possibly going for a trick room there, but the, the Helming Hand, Max Phantasm, just denying that immediately. Yeah, the Togekiss will switch out, though. Uh, obviously did its job on turn one, and it's now able to since there's no Shadow Tag anymore. That Fake Out is irrelevant since it went into the Arcanine slot. It just was in, so it's not going to go for an attack. Anyway, uh, the Dynamax move from Dragapult there on this turn will lower the attack of both of uh, of Lapras and and scrap these attacks thanks to the Max Wormwind and another Max Hailstorm. <coughs> Unfortunately, though, into the Arcanine slot. So this Arcanine took two attacks and he's still around 70% of his HP that turn. I'd say overall that's a win for Jeremy. Well, this Jeremy is in complete control here. You know. Reading the fake out and the uh, ice move into the Togekiss slot. And the Togekiss, you know, somewhat a problem because it uh, does have that dazzling gleam for the Scrafty. Uh, so Jeremy correctly preserving it, switching in that Arcanine to intimidate uh, the Scrafty uh, and uh, resist that Max Hailstorm as well. So this Dragapult will have one more chance to fire off a Max move. Uh, the Max Wormwind also dropping the Scrafty's attacks. Now it's at minus two. Uh, the Scrafty just really not in a great spot, especially considering this Togekiss is coming right back in. <laughs> oh, nope, just kidding. It's a Rotom. <laughs> Never mind. Rotom saying uh, he wants he wants to turn, he wants to go at the Lapras, but Lapras is not going to take any damage this turn because of the because of the Max Guard calling it correctly on Caleb's end. The attack from the Dragapult goes into the Lapras there, so he, Dragapult is now down. Thanks, even with the Intimidated Crunch, that was still enough for the Scrafty to take it out. Jeremy is out his Dynamax Pokemon. Of course, that was its third turn anyway, so yeah. it would have been it. But I think uh, Dragon Ball put in some work. Uh, obviously, it's it would have been nice to have if there if the Durant was the last Pokemon. But mm -hmm. Jeremy still has an Arcanine here, just in case that Durant is is looming in the back. Yeah, I'd be somewhat surprised to see Durant. Usually, when you bring Durant to games, it's kind of your dedicated Dynamax Pokemon. Uh, certainly an option here, and it would you know it would provide some good damage out. But we saw it do a lot with Max Flutterbite to Rotom, so it's probably carrying that X Scissor. Uh, we know it has Iron Head and Rock Slide to hit the Togekiss and the Arcanine, uh, so it could still you know make a d bit of an impact here. But I'd be st I, I would definitely be surprised to see that Durant. Uh, Jeremy making a lot out of his Dynamax turns with that Dragapult. You know, the, the huge KO with Gothitelle on turn one is the main story there. But, you know, getting those uh, Max Wormwind drops onto Scrafty uh, was pretty nice as well. And get some okay damage into Lapras. You know, it, Lapras is still sitting uh, at a decent amount of health. The Rotom and the Togekiss likely not able to take it out. And Jeremy does have to play around that weakness policy still. Uh, but the Scrafty is looking like uh, a terrified little child facing down this Togekiss. <laughs> This could be a turn for Rotom to go for Nasty Plot, though. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially either if Togekiss follow Mead, which he doesn't because he switches into the Arcanine, or if Caleb prioritizes that, that right slot there. Uh, the Hydro Pump, or uh, excuse me, the Nasty Plot from Rotom would kind of counteract a potential, um, you know, big boost to its weakness policy mm -hmm. from, from the Lapras. So we do actually see the... Uh, the uh, nasty plot there from Jeremy. So smart play. This freeze dry is not enough to knock it out. Oh, but he does no. get a freeze. That is right. Freeze dry has a 10% chance of freezing. Uh, the, this chair, this impressively, Rotom is able to eat a citrus berry while it's frozen solid. <laughs> uh, so I think he should be commended for that. I love how science works sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Close combat also doesn't do too much damage into the Scrafty since he's now minus two attack here, but that, that freeze, freeze is potentially huge. Yeah, no, that's really big. You know, that plus two special attack is really nice for Jeremy uh, because it would have given him a way to probably knock out this Lapras with a Thunderbolt and without having to deal with that weakness policy. Unfortunately, it does get frozen by the Lapras, uh, uh, which means that it you know, he's got about a 20% chance to uh, get a Thunderbolt off here before another freeze dry will claim the Rotom. And obviously Rotom has been wishing for four generations that it got scald at this yeah. point. Because he could scald himself out, right. uh, he would unthaw that way. But of course with Hydro Pump it does not share that same mechanic. So we got a 20% chance for Jeremy to break through here, you know, chip out of the ice, and he is not able to. He stays frozen. The Arcanine did switch out though into Togekiss, so uh, as Scrafty also switched out. So both of our trainers will switch out their uh, Intimidate Pokemon for their strong fairy in Togekiss. One kind of funny option that Jeremy had there was a, a side fire move. Uh, if he, that, if he's he, a water type, right? Yeah, so it, it depends, though, because the, the Rotom is, you know, not at the highest amount of health. You had a slight, slight chance of knocking yourself out. Um, and even if he didn't, you would have left your Rotom pretty weak. Um, Caleb did give Jeremy another chance to un like to thaw though because he did protect and not go for any damage to that Rotom. Uh, so Jeremy has one more chance to thaw here before likely taking some like a dazzling gleam from Caleb's Togekiss. And you gotta do anything you uh. can here for, as he does not thaw there, so he stays frozen solid two turns in a row. 
Air Slash from Jeremy's Togekiss into Caleb's. We'll bring it down to half of its HP. Thanks to a critical oh. hit. And he gets the flinch. The flinch All right. crit, Caleb says, seems fair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think I liked your note about the fire attack, though, into Rotom, because that Rotom has a nasty plot boost. Right. You have to do everything you can at this moment to use that Rotom effectively yeah. to do as much damage as possible, and that would have been a uh, kind of neat idea. And now Rotom, again, even even if he did wake up on that turn, he was he got fake out it, so he <laughs> still would not have attacked. Another air slash. Is it a crit? Another it is flinch? a crit! Is there, another, is there a secondary oh. flinch? No! <laughs> Dazzling Gleam, Caleb is able to break through, knocking out the Rotom, not doing too much damage to Togekiss, though. That's two turns in a row Jeremy is outsped on Togekiss, so right. maybe we can assume his Togekiss is potentially faster. Yeah. Uh, and he can go for Dazzling Gleams also to, to take down the Scrafty. And yep. Scrafty's even worse off for wear now that it's been intimidated again from this Arcanine switch in. Yeah, and even though the Rotom was frozen for a while, Jeremy really not in the worst position here because, like Joe said, if this Togekiss on Jeremy's side is faster than Caleb's, uh, this is a pretty free Dazzling Gleam to take two knockouts. And you still have the Togekiss and the Arcanine that can try to face down this Lapras. There's no way that Lapras can knock out both at once. Uh, we, it, I guess it could run Surf, but I, I would very unlikely <laughs> running Surf. Uh, so it, Jeremy will have you know at least three hits on the Lapras, which would most likely be able to take it out, especially if it does take some damage here on the Switch uh, from something like a Dazzling Gleam or a Flare Blitz. The Lapras will switch into the Togekiss slot, or excuse me, the... Um, uh, was crafty. It's crafty yeah. I totally forgot his name at that point. Uh, Arcanine is going to snarl though. This is this will affect both the Lapras and Togekiss as they are both special attackers. But if Togekiss went, if Jeremy's Togekiss went for Dazzling Gleam, it's not going to matter. Obviously, that is what he decided to do. Togekiss is knocked out. Lapras with a crit is down to around 35, 40 percent of its HP. The crit on Togekiss obviously not mattering since it was so low HP. Now Caleb down is down to his final two Pokemon here. If he's not able to force a comeback, Jeremy's going to be 5-0, and, and and Caleb is going to be really nervous going into the last two rounds of Swiss. A very smart play from Jeremy there, knowing that the, the possible follow me was coming and knowing that the Dazzling Gleam you know, would have pick and, picked up both KOs. He gets that Snarl on the Lapras immediately, which even further drops Caleb's chances of pulling this game back. You know, Caleb does have fake-out pressure with that Scrafty, but no matter which slot he targets, he has to take either another special attack drop from a Snarl uh, or just a knockout uh, on a Scrafty from the Togekiss. Fake out from Scrafty into the Togekiss, going to stop it, any shenanigans that turn. Flare Blitz into Lapras is not enough for a knockout, though. Uh, very, very close, but not enough. Perish oh. Song from Lapras this is going to put all the all the Pokemon under that spell. So for the next three turns, uh, the Perish count, basically, since there's no way to switch out, when Perish Song ends, so when the Perish count gets to zero, the Pokemon on the field is knocked out. So I yeah. guess Caleb's win condition in this spot is can Scrafty stick around long enough for three uh, for three turns? I mean, he essentially needs a triple protect on both of his Pokemon here because they're both in knockout range from like right, a, a dazzling, dazzling gleam. gleam. Yeah. Right, right. Interesting play from Caleb there. I think his chances might have been a little bit higher if he had tried to go for a knockout uh, on either the Togekiss or the Arcanine that turn. You know, if he right, had like a lot of tight protected moves. Scrafty, but then uh, like well, yeah, because you know, Lapras. for example, if you like freeze dry the Lapras and maybe hope for a crit or another freeze, right. uh, then you still have Scrafty, which can possibly take on this Arcanine. We saw close combat, so it might have had the firepower to take out the Arcanine. No, with that minus one special attack, probably wasn't enough on its own uh, to take out the Togekiss, but it looks like we are going to see a couple failed double protects, which means Jeremy is going to take this round here against Caleb. Yeah, congratulations to Jeremy. He is currently 5-0 and oh today at our uh, our second midseason showdown of the weekend here. He's 4-1. and one. Sorry about that. My bad. Nope. Uh, <laughs> I, I read the, the things wrong. Um, so he actually has one loss because I think he was undefeated in Swiss as the one seed yesterday, right? I think he was 6-1 as well yesterday. He was six, wait, we, we didn't, didn't have, have a 7-0? No. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I thought we did. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Regardless, he's putting in work in, in Island, yeah. New Jersey right, right. Now, this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I don't I know. know. Maybe maybe he, like, wants to to just get a couple of CP so you can go play in the PC afterwards. True, you know yeah. I mean? That's always an option. You probably nice get payment. more mileage out of a midseason than a PC in general. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, the more you play over the weekend. It, True. We, we had 14 yeah. rounds of Pokemon yesterday. Yeah, the, the PC itself also had PC. seven rounds of Switch, which is pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. congratulations, to Jeremy. I think Caleb played pretty well, as yeah. well as mm -hmm. he could have in that matchup. I think, uh, obviously, maybe he wasn't expecting the helping hand to counteract the Kassib barrier. Right. Mm -hmm. Scrafty never wants to see a Togekiss. Like, there were just some some really tough moments. Uh, some of his four times weaknesses really came to bite him in those two games between yeah. the Scrafty and the Durant. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, well played to both players. You know, really entertaining round here in round five. Oh, we got two more rounds of Swiss coming out for you, so don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Jeremy for an interview.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I am here with your last round winner, Jeremy Odina. Jeremy, I was really hoping when we drove our five hours down here that you'd be able to pull out some great stuff. And I didn't get a chance to interview you yesterday, but you did end up top seed. And now you are still four and one, which is an incredible score. So how are you feeling right now? Uh, a little tired, but I'm happy <laughs> to just be persevering through it and getting that nice win on stream. Yeah, absolutely. What about um, earlier? I did want to talk about... With your games, you know, he leads that Durant lead. How confident are you against Durant with this version of your team? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I saw his name on the pairings, and I said, oh, he can just lead redirection and Durant versus me. I'm not sure what I can do. So I just did some smart pivoting and just tried to wear down the token kiss before, um, you know, and, and run out the Durant's uh, Dynamax turns because after it's Dynamax, it's useless. Mm -hmm. uh, in game two as well, you had that freeze on your Rotom, which was pretty crippling, I think. Uh, I know you were probably trying to get that KO a little bit faster on that Lapras, and then he switched and almost toyed with the you a little bit, where it's like, if I unfreeze this turn, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? I'm sure yeah. that is a little bit frustrating, but you did end up at the beginning of that game getting the luck on your side, not even luck, but more calculations of getting that knockout on Gothitelle turn one. How important was that for you? Oh, it was huge because I didn't want Trickham going up, and I thought, I, I know a lot of Gothitelle are now building for um, their physical defense, so I felt like with a life orb, with a helping hand, and a max phantasm could get the KO. Um, on the, the, the Rotom Freeze, that friends at home, that's like uh, a reason not to play greedy because <laughs> the nasty plot was super greedy and I got punished for it. So um, even though it was unfortunate, it, it could have been avoided just by playing a little bit more within myself. Yeah, I think especially too uh, with your team, you, you know this team pretty well. You've played versions of this team uh, recently. Did you play a team similar to this? Uh, were you prepping? I know you didn't end up going to Dallas, but was this your Dallas prep similar to, mm. with, to what the team you're running now? Yeah, the only difference was I had I didn't have Dragapult. I did have the um, the Sand Duo 
Um, but I had a, a, a Rotom Mo and um, a Gastrodon, but it was similar. Just um, I just go with comfortability, whatever works for me. It's not about making the, the big brain play and the big brain uh, team choice it's about what works. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, with you for the end of game two and you're dealing with that parish, uh, a parish kind of trap at the end where it's two on two. How worried were you for two, uh, three turn protects? Um, <laughs> was it, was uh, it in the back of your mind at all? Like, did you think about that? Honestly, it, it, that stuff doesn't come up into my mind until he gets to probably protect number two. That and then true. I'm like, you know what? Okay, the impossible could happen. But I, I wasn't worried. I felt like I had, had it pretty locked down, even though it was kind of back and forth because of the freeze. Yeah, I do think for you, positioning was huge in that game. Able for you to swap out those Intimidates with that Arcanine, mm -hmm. getting things off. Even in game one onto his Durant, an Intimidate onto a Life Orb Durant with Hustle is still mm -hmm. massive. Um, what do you think for you in terms of dealing with something like like Parish Song where, you know, it's like a last, last worst case scenario uh, for you? If you know that it's coming and it's an option, how do you play around that? I try to just go all offense um, like I did in, the, in that game. I didn't know Parish was coming, but... Typically, you try to overwhelm Parish. Um, to, you know, getting a knockout very early is key, and because uh, they can't, it, you know, it neuters their their switching ability. So, um, just trying to to get a knockout as fast as possible is very really important. All right, great. Well, anything else you want to say to anybody? Any shout outs? Anything? Yep. Um, shout out to MIT Pokemon League. Shout out to New England. Um, shout out to everybody who didn't come, and shout out to everybody who's, who's here. Great. Mm -hmm. Shout out to me for driving you. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right, true. guys, that is going to do it for us. We will be back with the analyst desk, so stay tuned.